Welcome to the Music for Transformation interview series where I get to interview amazing people who use music to enhance their own lives and that of other people as well. So first of all, just hit that subscribe button now and enjoy the interview. Joining me today is a good friend of mine, Dr. Kasha Wilk. How are you doing, Kasha? Hi, James. I'm very excited to be here and thanks so much for having me. Good. Great to have you here. And I think you are the first doctor that we've actually had on this series as well. So, uh, yeah, very excited about that. So let me tell you a little bit about Kasha. She is a chartered counselling psychologist, transformation coach, speaker and founder of Choice Point Productions Limited. So Choice Point Productions is basically a film company. Um, which came about after wit- after Kasha witnessed the aftermath of the Manchester terror attack in 2017. So after feeling the impact of a negative choice made by the individual, she set on a mission of showcasing the power of choice using the film platform to positively influence as many people as possible to become conscious choice makers. And I've been privileged enough to sort of be alongside doing that journey a little bit because we you know we have uh, meetings around once a month and I've I've sort of seen the progress that that has taken so really excited for all of that so coupled with her experiences of facilitating self-awareness regarding choices for clients in therapy she's keenly developed an expertise regarding the most common patterns of disempowering choices that almost everyone makes and she's committed to bringing this awareness to the world in order to empower people to make conscious choices that lead to more freedom, happiness and unity on a personal and global level, which sounds absolutely awesome. (laughs) So, um, yeah. Tell Mm. us a little bit about, first of all, then, Kasia, obviously we're speaking lots about music as well, but your background is obviously in the, um, you know, you're you're a chartered counselling psychologist. So tell us a little bit about about that and, and how you work with people in that front to start with. Yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for the introduction. I, I've always been fascinated with how we operate as human beings, how our minds work, um, what is it that really drives us and the choices we make. So I've always been fascinated with psychology and I love what I get to do because I get to facilitate the process of transformation for people and I really get to witness people stepping into their authentic power I help support them with making better choices which leads to creating different realities for themselves because ultimately when we're stuck it's it's there's something that needs to change whether that's in our thinking in our beliefs in our behaviors So I feel really privileged that I get to be able to do this in my work as a counseling psychologist. I have my own private practice. I do workshops um, every now and then where I teach on these topics. And I also, as you you mentioned a few years ago, decided to embark on using the film platform to reach more people because I realized that not everybody is going to access that process of transformation that is available when you go see a therapist or a coach or a mentor. And I really felt like, especially after I live in Manchester and after that um, terror attack, I just thought, you know, that's a choice that someone made from a, a really disempowered state that was probably coming from fear, pain, or anger. And I thought if they had known that there was other options they had to deal with those emotions that were inside of them and that they could look at making a different choice that was fueled from love, forgiveness, courage, faith, then they would be creating a very different reality for themselves and those around them. And that's basically what I witness um, every day when I work with people. It's really like witnessing how radically they can transform their lives by making different choices and our emotions are what drive our choices oftentimes so when you're very present 
to what emotional state you're in and how that is influencing your choices, then you can actually start feeling more in control and more empowered because you know that you can choose emotions that um, are serving you rather than getting stuck in emotions that are just quite negative and are influencing you in a negative way. So in a nutshell, yeah, I everything is connected, whether it's I'm doing filmmaking or private practice. And I'm just really passionate about supporting people to live their best lives. I love that. Thank you. And I want to talk more a bit about that word choice, because you've obviously chosen to really focus on that key word. And for anyone watching, and in this and this will have relevance, you know, this discussion will have relevance to the whole music theme of this interview as, as well. Yes. You know, you've already alluded to emotions and thoughts and things like that, which, you know, music can influence and affect, etc. But with that word choice, you know, when I hear the word choice, I'm, I sometimes think of my background in the fitness industry, for example, you know, because people's diets, f- people's food intake is about choice, whether or not they decide to exercise is all about choice. So could you explain to me just a little bit more about, you know, what your sort of definitions or descriptions are with that word choice and give me some examples um, of, of the type of choices that, that maybe do affect us, you know, again, disempowering or empowering, etc. And, and how you sort of work with that yourself. Yes, of course. This is a, a great question because we are constantly making choices every single day, right? From the moment that we wake up to the moment we go to sleep, We are choosing what we're focusing on. We're choosing the stories we are telling ourselves about what we are experiencing every single day. We're choosing how we are responding to the things that happen to us every single day. And as you've mentioned as well, James, it's it's also about like, you know, the food we eat, um, how much self-care, for example, we are incorporating, you know, do we, are we just working? Do we take time out to uh, seek pleasure and connection and other things outside of work? So oftentimes what I find when people come and see me is they're oftentimes stuck in this autopilot mode of making choices that are not serving them without necessarily being conscious of why they're making those choices. So really what a big portion of therapy is about getting really consciously aware of like, why am I doing what I'm doing? What's driving that choice? And what happens is we we discover that a lot of this comes from past programming, past experiences where, we know, we just have a particular way of responding that just becomes like our natural pattern. And we don't realize that we can we can change it because it becomes so familiar that we don't realize there are other ways of dealing with that thing or there's another perspective that we can take on board to look at, for example, a topic like health or a topic like finances. Yeah, as people, we always tend to have certain beliefs and stories about everything that's going on in our lives. And again, if once you sort of start recognizing like, well, why do I believe this about money or why do I have this belief about, you know, relationships or I have this belief about um, my spouse, for example, you know, it's, there's all kinds of stories that we're choosing as well. And so when we choose a story that is really empowering and it's coming from a place of, uh, you know, an emotion that feels good, like love or courage or faith, you can, create a completely different experience in your life. And so that's why for me, this whole concept of the power of choice is probably like the most important thing that I think if everybody really was conscious of the power of choice that we all have, whether it's what we think when we wake up in the morning, what we're telling ourselves, especially about ourselves, because we often tell negative stories about ourselves and that is a choice as well. So when you realize you've got 
all these choices that lead to all these different experiences and outcomes in your life, then you really feel empowered because you're like, oh, I'm actually the creator of everything in my life. And I can create anything if I know that I just need to make different choices. Wow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think when you first start to appreciate that and comprehend that and understand that, it can seem quite well, difficult, to be honest, to take, can't it, to take responsibility for that. You know, I imagine there's some people saying, well, of course, I'm going to respond like that because of them or because of that situation. Uh, and, and often, like you say, it is in our subconscious. So we're not even necessarily aware of those continual patterns. It, it just seems it, it's like obviously where our mind is controlling us rather than us controlling our, our minds because obviously our mind is, is part of us as a yes. being. So, um, yeah, it, you know, it, it, it can be really uh, challenging, I think, to really first sometimes accept that, that, that we are responsible for our choices. Uh, and we do have choices in, in pretty much everything we do and, mm -hmm. and, you know, the thoughts we think and the feelings we feel. Uh, and then obviously having responsibility for actually changing those things. Do you, just very quickly, because I want to come on to music, how difficult is it for people to make those changes in terms of things like beliefs? Can beliefs be changed? Yes, of course they can. And this is a, this is really important, I think, for people to recognize, like, it's not a walk in the park. It does take a process of getting very self-aware of almost like observing yourself and, and getting curious about what is it that's going through my mind? But absolutely, beliefs can be changed with repetition. With um, because a belief is a is a thought that you keep thinking over and over again. So if you start thinking a different thought, and you start telling yourself a different story, whether that is through affirmations or it's through gathering evidence that supports the new story or it is about acting as if you believe that and then looking at what results you create, right? If you believe you can do something, you're probably more likely to take the risk and try it. And sometimes you have to just take that action and take on board that belief, try something, and then the result you get reinforces the new story. Like, oh, I can actually do it. Or, oh, it's not as scary as I thought it would be. So there's all kinds of ways to change beliefs, but the most important first step is to make the decision and the commitment, like, I want to change this. You know, I have this disempowering story. I tell myself about whatever it can be that, you know, I'm not good enough is a, is a common, common disempowering belief. Um, I think almost everyone has to a certain extent. And it's when you make the choice to say, you know what, this isn't serving me, and I want to change it. I want to believe that I am enough or that I am good enough to, to do this. That's the first step. And by making that commitment and putting in the work every day to change that mindset around that belief, you're going to get there. And, and then obviously, you know, in the beginning, it's a little bit harder because it's unfamiliar and it takes a little bit more effort. But once you get momentum moving in that direction and you begin to see that you are creating your reality and that your belief is leading the way and you begin to see the evidence of that change happening, then it just becomes easier and easier. And pretty soon it's like, you know, you're good enough, you know, so it's, it's not impossible. It's, I always say it does take a bit of effort, but it is so worth it. It's so worth it because that's what we're here for <laughs> is to create the lives we want and experience the lives we want. Absolutely. Yeah. Great answer. Thank you. And I know you obviously use lots of tools and, and techniques, both with your clients and yourself as well. And I know just one of the things that you use to affect again feelings and things like that is is music or, or sound isn't it can you tell us a little bit more about how you use that in in your own life absolutely I mean I everything that I teach or I guide people through you know I am 
I aim to embody this myself and I aim to be in the practice myself. And so I know how important our emotional state is. So when you're having a particular um, experience of yourself or another person or a situation, there's usually the combination of you're having a particular story around it, there's a particular thought, and then that thought leads to a particular kind of emotional state. And then your emotional state will influence how you react or respond. And sometimes it's very automatic because for example, when we're in fear, we go right into self-protection and we usually have a fight or flight type of reaction. I'm either gonna attack back or I'm gonna retreat and you know, move away from this situation. So it's really important to just make that connection. And I know, for example, that if I don't train my mind to work for me and get my emotions on board as well, that, you know, I can, I can get myself into worrying or um, being more reactive and, and feel a bit less in control. So one of the tools that I find is so powerful on influencing emotions is music and music is one of those tools I think everyone can relate to it like when you put on when you put on a really upbeat happy song you feel better yeah you want to get up you want to dance you want to it puts you in a positive emotional state if you want to have a more calm relaxing evening you can put on something you know, a bit more slow and, uh, and calming, and that will put you in that state. So music is an incredibly powerful tool to influence how we feel. And I've always known this for a really long time, but I haven't really, I think, articulated it um, like I am recently. So recently, for example, when I even work with clients and we're looking at things like meditation or mindfulness to help them get into a more calm, peaceful state. Meditations that have guided audio with music are very, very effective at calming the nervous system down and almost bringing in that, that feeling of safety, that feeling of slowing down, of connecting to the breath. So sound, absolutely can be very effective at training our nervous system to, to be more calm and to, and to feel more safe. So in my own life, I have playlists that I have for different kinds of emotional states I wanna have. So in the morning when I'm getting ready and I wanna sort of be like, I wanna get ready for my day, I wanna feel excited, I wanna feel inspired, I wanna feel pumped. I'm like, I gotta put on some music that's gonna get me into that state so that then when I go into my work day, that's the energy that I'm bringing. And in the evenings when I wanna calm down and I wanna relax, so I'll have certain music, certain playlists for that as well. And yeah, to sum it up, I think it's, it's, it's really influential on our energy and our energy obviously is everything because our energy influences um, how we show up, how we, yeah, how we navigate the different experiences we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And if your energy is um, not quite right, it's gonna have a huge impact. So, yeah. so I couldn't imagine a world without, without music. It's, it's such a big part of my life and it's something I really feel is such an easy tool that we all have access to. Yeah, that's that's one of the beautiful things about it, isn't it? You know, especially in this day and age, you only have to go onto the internet and you can access music and you can access meditations, etc. And I, I totally agree with you in terms of things like guided meditations. I generally prefer a guided meditation that has some form of sound. It could be music, it could be sort of you know natural nature sounds. Often I do still prefer kind of music though, you know, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to something like um, you know like uh, running water or something it can be absolutely lovely. It can be soothing and I like that, but often I still sort of prefer music or, or would like the two uh, to go together. So I think, yeah, music for me and, and sound does does really have uh, a big effect. So 
based upon what you said, I'd like to suggest a, a little bit of a, a kind of conclusion from what you said. And I want to uh, check that, you know, you, you, to see whether or not you would agree with this. So earlier on within our interview, you were saying about choices. You were saying that our choices, our daily choices are very much affected by our thoughts and our feelings. Those yes. choices that we make then affect the, the, the actions that we take, the results that we get. They ultimately affect our life. You've also said that music very much affects our emotions and our feelings. So would you be so bold as to say that in theory, music could very much affect your choices, which ultimately can affect your results and your life. Is it is that sort of an equation you would kind of say? Yes, I think I think um, the link there that I think is really powerful that you're that you're absolutely connecting is that music does affect our emotions and our emotions affect our behavior. So yes, absolutely. I think that when it comes to making radical life choices, it's probably, you know, looking a bit deeper in the sense of like, I don't want to sort of say as far, like if you listen to one song, your life is going to radically change. However, the consistency of putting yourself day to day in a positive emotional state over time will 100% radically change your life. Because if you are feeling good consistently on a day-to-day -day basis, or you're able to bounce back from challenges fairly, in, you know, in a fairly easy way, you're going to be a lot more resilient when it comes to facing challenges. And yes, your, your choices are going to be reflecting you, for example, feeling happiness, love, gratitude on a more consistent basis because when you're in that emotional state it's um everything reflects that you know even when you interact with people it has has such a positive influence uh it creates a ripple effect whereas if you're in a fearful state or you're angry or you're just feeling super disempowered your energy is going to be reflecting that and of course, that's going to create a ripple effect. So it is, it, is a, it is something that is, as you say, it's something so simple, but it's, it's so important that we, we really look after ourselves and we really move towards feeling good on a day-to-day -day basis. So I know, for example, right now, this year, we've had you know, quite a lot of fear-based uh, messages out in the world. And I know people have been experiencing more fear. I know it's very easy to get pulled into the doom and gloom stories. And there is a reality that's happening in the world with, with the health pandemic. However, it's also really important that we don't let the chaos of what's going on in the world pull us into such a disempowered state that um, you know, we're suffering more than we need to be because there is a reality that's going on in the world, but our response to that reality is what's actually creating the suffering. Yeah. And that's where our choice is. So again, it all links back to how are you choosing to respond to that? And what are you doing to look after yourself on that emotional level? You know, and for me, music is is key. Like I, I'd rather put on uplifting music and, you know, feel into the possibilities of what's around the corner. What what is it in the future that this whole situation is going to be opening up for us? And I'd rather do that than, you know, listen to doom and gloom stories i'm aware of what's going on in the world through the news but i think there's you know we should we should each have a threshold on how much of that we're we're consuming on a daily basis so it's very relevant in our times right now to be looking after our emotions 
So true. Thank you. An e- excellent answer. And I think the other thing you say, um, you know, we're talking, you're talking about choices and things like that and, and tools and strategies. And I just want to echo what you said, Kasia, first of all, that, yeah, we're not saying play a song and it solves all your problems and your, your life is all, you know, fine and dandy. We're certainly not saying that. One thing I sort of find with, with music is if, like you said, you're using it in certain ways throughout your day, what you are actually doing is you are starting to control your day. You are starting to control, again, your choices, aren't you? Your routines. You are starting to consciously influence your feelings. And although that won't instantly get uh, rid of all the, the, the problems, just having that feeling of, I can do something about it. I can be in control. And of course, again, like you said about music before, it's accessible. It, it, it's there you know you just have to press a button or, or click on the mouse something like that it's something that we can do even if we're feeling a little bit low you know so I, th- I think I wanted to sort of um yeah mm-hmm. just kind of go over that point again I want to mm-hmm. talk as well about law of attraction because you mentioned about getting into a certain state and emotions and you said something which I think is really important that is about that I can't remember exactly how you worded it, but it's about those feel good feelings where you're sort of feeling happy or joy or, you know, gratitude, those higher level vibrations, if you like, a higher energy. And I know this isn't necessarily necessarily, correct me if I'm wrong, necessarily what the type of stuff you might have specifically been taught within like your PhD, etc. But I know that also you're, you know, aware of, of things that, and use the things like law of attraction and spirituality and all those sort of things. And something I have been doing recently I've been focusing on things like my morning routine, where sometimes I was finding that my morning routine, I knew I should do it, but it was starting to feel a little bit of a drag sometimes doing it. And I have used music in certain ways to really, to be honest, make me really enjoy it. And also I'm I'm currently creating some products to help other people through that process because it's really been helping me. So I'm doing things like my gratitude practices and I'm involving music in a special way, same with like visualizations. And I'm really enjoying it. And it is really raising my vibration where I'm feeling really good rather Mm -hmm. than just going through the process of it. So I just wondered if you could comment on this whole aspect of feeling good and attracting good things into your life through the law of attraction? Yes. Wow, what a great question. I love it. Um, I think we, in the future, this is going to be understood to a much bigger degree where we're going to understand that emotion is energy in motion and that we are ultimately... We are in physical bodies, but we are also energetic beings. And the more you actually dig into the science of things like quantum physics, you begin to see that actually everything is energy. That is the language of the universe. And therefore, if we understand it in a really powerful way, then we can harness it and we can use it. And so when you are in a particular, what I love the most, and I say this most from my own experience, um, is that when I'm feeling really, really good, what I find is the most powerful thing that happens is you receive the insights, the inspiration, and the guidance in your thoughts and in your thinking, the ideas, the the sort of things that are like oh i i got this idea that i you know because i'm feeling good and i'm not sort of stressed out you actually begin to find the answers that you're looking for without having to go outside of yourself and seek them externally because what happens is when you're in that higher vibration you're able to tap into your own guidance and wisdom and actually access really, really powerful ideas. And and I'll share with you, like the vision I I got for my film company came from a meditative experience that I had where it was a very, very powerful emotional experience. And I received the idea of doing this film company that was all about um, using film to empower people, not just 
entertain them, but educate and empower them. And that experience continues to unfold if, if I put myself into those emotional states. So there's a real power that we have, absolutely, in being able to then put things together. It's almost like the answers come. It's like we figure out the solutions to the problems we have because we're able to only access those kinds of thoughts when we are in those higher vibrations, when we are feeling good. I say this and the sun's like <laughs> shining through the trees now. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, if, I think this, this whole concept of, of energy and emotions and frequencies, I think it's something that we're not, it isn't quite, it's not mainstream knowledge. It's not something that we are understanding in order to have a collective quantum shift in society yet. But I think it's becoming more and more possible to understand these things because there is more and more people talking about these things. And I think in the future it is going to be something that we're going to be able to understand collectively on a much larger scale. And it's going to influence so many aspects of our society, including, you know, how we look at our own health as well and the influence that our emotions also have on our health. There's a whole body of research out there that is, is coming to light now that says, that talks about the mind body connection. And that if you actually repress negative emotions, you don't allow yourself to process them and work through them so that you can release them and move into higher emotions that when you repress those emotions, they start to have a physical effect in your body and they can start to break things down in your body, which leads to illness and disease. So there's a whole um, host of things that once you start understanding how these laws operate in the universe, that you begin to see that everything is energy and our emotions are such a powerful aspect of who we are and we're just beginning to understand that more and more I would say recently and and we're beginning to know that actually how I feel is probably the most important thing that I can look to nurture and control and I don't have to be afraid to feel the negative feelings because sometimes you do have to feel that you have to feel grief or you have to feel anger but it doesn't mean you have to stay stuck there you don't have to let that feeling be something that controls the rest of your life, but you need to feel it in order to move past it and release it and transform it or transmute it, you know, sometimes as people say. So, yes, so law of attraction um, is absolutely relevant in all of this because uh, when you understand that everything is energy and our emotions are like a type of frequency, that we then operate from and we can receive information on that frequency and we can transmit on that frequency then you begin to understand it's it's all interconnected and so if i'm in a positive state and i'm always and i'm accessing the information that is on that frequency then i'm going to be able to have access to white a much wider range of possibilities than if i'm on a frequency of fear i mean fear is a very very powerful frequency and unfortunately, it's one that constricts and it moves us into self-protection. It limits us. We don't feel safe when we're there. So we're really operating from a very limited aspect of ourselves when we're in fear. And that's the challenge of this year, actually, is to, is to not get stuck there and to still continue to access those higher vibrations of, of feelings. So it's very important now to do that. I love that answer. I really do. It's, it's so much, you know, if you're watching this, watch it back again, because there's so many golden nuggets there. But yeah, it is so true, because as, as you will certainly know and um, talk about many times, I'm sure, Kasha, if we are very anxious, for example, literally certain parts of our brain are not functioning properly. Are they? We know we yes. can't access certain parts of our brain where we, we can think logically and, and rationally. So it stands to reason that if we kind of do the opposite, if we are in those 
those good emotions, those higher level vibration forms of energy, then it stands to reason that we can sort of, in a way, open up our brain, open up our, our heart, open up our intuition. And according to the law of attraction, well, well there, you know, then we, we start to attract good things into our life, providing we, we take action on them, of course. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I love that answer. And once again, just to fit in with the theme of this, once again, music obviously could be a tool, not saying it's the be all and end all, but it could be a tool to again affect those things where if you if you can use music to influence your emotions, and it's a very great point that you mentioned, Kasha, that we it's not just a case of always getting away from the negatives because we need to deal with those negative emotions, but uh, and music can certainly do that as well. But if, if we were to if we were to use music to change our emotions to become more positive, then really, yes, maybe we are attracting a lot more good things to us, uh, be it insights, be it intuition, ideas, opportunities through the law of attraction as well. So, yeah, mm-hmm. is it a key part there? So I, I love that. Absolutely. And I and I want to just I want to just point out one thing that comes to mind is, is you know, I've had a number of experiences when I've gone through my own transformation process and I've, or if, whether that's been at a workshop or a seminar where the facilitators used music to create a collective group experience that carried a certain kind of energy that helped us move through whatever we were doing, whether that was, you know, breath work that I've done in the past that i remember music was a big big part of that helping people move through stuck emotions um I know you know there's people talk about the big Tony Robbins events where music is is used as well to to kind of get people into peak state so that then when information is presented they really can receive it because they're in that higher state where they're like oh I'm really getting this I really can feel the power of this so It is being, I think it's being used in different settings, but I think it's, yeah, just being aware, I think, of of making that link and that connection that um, this isn't new information. It's, it's, it has been there in the past, but I think not everybody has been aware of the power of music. Mm, Great point. Thank you. It it just made me think as well, just something again, I want to sort of give as a suggestion to people. I heard somewhere, I can't remember now what it was someone who told me or just something I was watching or listening to about when you're setting goals. So when you're setting goals, what was suggested was come away from that usual environment that you're in. Maybe that environment could be your house where maybe things aren't always as you would like them to be. You know, maybe you've got screaming kids or, or you've, you've, you've tried to make changes before and it hasn't worked. You know, come into a whole new environment and then you're kind of creating your goals from like a, you know, a, a blank sheet of paper, fresh starts. And it then made me sort of think, well, that would be great. Again, if you, if you concentrate when you're making your goals, if you concentrate on trying to, again, elevate your energy, your emotions, make them all positive, again, when you are creating your goals, you're so much more excited because you're feeling empowered, aren't you? And and I think that would be a a great starting point rather than sort of setting goals when you're feeling a little bit low and, oh, well, yeah, I really want this goal, but, you know, I've still got all all these other things that I'm kind of thinking of. So again, maybe music, it, it could be, could be great for goal setting as well. So, um, yeah, in, interesting there. Mm-hmm. Interesting, something mm-hmm. for me to uh, think about as well and, uh, and practice. And, and, and 100%. Use, so. Absolutely. Okay. Let's talk because you, you've spoken a little bit about uh, your, your film now and your, your film company. Let's talk a bit about that. So what is this company about? And, uh, you know, what's happening next? What have we got to look forward to? Because I am very excited about what's coming. But, um, yeah, tell us more. Yes, of course. Um, I'm excited too um, about what's coming next because so the film company is very much related to what we're talking about. It is all about empowering people to be consciously aware of what choices they are making and what emotion is driving them. So that instead of making disempowered choices, which are often coming from the emotions of fear, anger or past pain they can 
move to making choices that are coming from a place of love, courage, and faith. And this is what I do in my private practice with clients. It is absolutely about helping them move into those emotional states and start acting from those higher emotions and start making choices from that place, right? Because we all know the example of like, if you've been hurt in the past, for example, and you let that hurt or that pain stay with you, then for example, in a relationship, this is a common thing, you get hurt in a past relationship. So then you bring that hurt into the next relationship and you don't feel like you can trust or open yourself up because you haven't, you brought that past pain into the present. So that's one example. And so the film company is all about showcasing that in a way that is innovative and our current film, which is called Unseen Scars, which is our debut feature film, is looking at this scenario of overcoming trauma. And it's particularly looking at a storyline of a military veteran who comes back from war and has a really hard time dealing with the traumas he's faced and doesn't know how to cope with that. So the, the purpose of the film is to really showcase how our traumas or our past hurts can really drive the way we cope and it can drive our future choices. And so he makes a series of choices that are very commonly what happens when you are feeling disempowered, but they're not serving him. And so the film really showcases that how it affects his relationships, how it affects his health, how he's hiding it. He doesn't have the courage to ask for help, ask for support. And it's we wanted the film to be very relatable. So we did a, a series of interviews with veterans to really create a script that was capturing the real life experience of what happens in that process of trying to recover. And we also are adding in this unique element where at every moment that the main character has to face a significant choice in the film, we are actually intercutting that moment with a real life interview with a veteran who's gone through that same process, who's, who's faced that same choice. So it gives the viewer a chance to stop and pause and think like, oh, that's a really significant moment that can either create this reality or that reality. And that's the purpose of the whole uh, film that we're doing and also it's the purpose of the film company because it's the mission is to really bring in that self-awareness that would be happening in therapy but bringing it to as many people as possible so that everybody can be conscious of like oh I've been making all these fear-based choices in my life and I'm creating my own suffering wow, I can, I can create a radically different reality if I just become aware of what I've been doing. And that to me is something I'm super passionate about bringing. And right now we are um, just in the process of being in pre-production. So we're aiming to film in the spring of next year, COVID permitting. So 2021 for- 2021, <laughs> yes. And um, it's very exciting because it's combining feature film drama that is entertaining with the real life stories of veterans. And we are also creating a movement behind the film. So we are creating a podcast where we're gonna be featuring more stories from veterans and their experiences. And even though it is focused around military veteran experiences, there's a bigger conversation that is also unfolding around this film with generally how we can recover from our traumas and past hurts and what choices are available to us to do that, so. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, you know, I love the mission. I, I love, I love, you know, who you are and what you're about, but I love that the mission behind it, you know, it's very much a purpose led thing, isn't it? As opposed to just making a film, it's, it, it's the, it's the purpose is the mission behind it. So, uh, so if anyone is interested in finding out more, you have a website for that, don't you? Is it choicepointproductions.com? Yes, I've got a few different websites. So um, the film company website, choicepointproductions.com. And then for our specific feature film, we have a website called Unseen Scars 
www.dr.kashafilm.com. And then my own personal website is drkashawilk.com. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. So if people want to, if people want to know more about the film, you can go to, to that web um, website, the, the Choice Point Productions, etc. Um, and I'll put all the links uh, down below in the show notes as well. Um, if people are interested in sort of uh, working with you, um, then, you know, Dr. Dr. Kasha Wilk uh, would be the best place. Kasha, yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. People can find me there. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. And and you're on, you know, social media as well as, as Dr. Kasha Wilk, etc. I think you've also got uh, some free resources, haven't you, on the Dr. Kasha Wilk as well. So they're, they're sort of resources just to, to, to help people, uh, help people's mindset, etc. are they? Yes, I have under the resources tab some videos, I have blogs, and it really is about, yeah, just um, giving tips and tools really to navigate, you know, different things that I see commonly people struggle with so whether that is anxiety or building more resilience or accessing something like forgiveness and the power of that um, you can find it all there on the website that's brilliant thank you and i know you've you've also just thinking about it as well you you've got an online course as well haven't you so people could find out more about that from you as well i'm guessing if they wanted to sort of delve into uh, some some different strategies for again sort of their mindset and dealing with anxiety etc yes yes exactly the online course is specifically on how to overcome stress and anxiety because it's probably the number one thing I see the most and um there's there's that can also be accessed from my website as well and people can find more information about it there and some free videos as well that give you a taster of what it's about and then if speaks to them they can purchase the course on the website that's brilliant. That's excellent. Well, Kasha, it has been an absolute delight. I know that you are someone that not only teaches these principles, but applies it, you know, to yourself as well. And, and something I will say, and you, you won't mind me saying that, you, you won't mind me saying this, because we've sort of been on, on the, the journey together over the last couple of years, it's not as though... You, you, you know, you, you've got everything perfect in your own head or in your own life, is it? And it's exactly the same with me. It's a constant process. You know, for anyone who's watching this, just thinking, well, I'm, I'm so far away from that. You know, it seems like these people know all this stuff and I'm struggling. No, you know, we're continually working on it as well. But Kasha, like I say, you are someone that embodies it. You're constantly working on yourself. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you're, you're achieving great things. So um, thank you ever so much for for um, being, you know, taking time out of your day to uh, to join me in this interview. It's been absolutely informative and, and, and fascinating. So thank you ever so much. Thank you so much for watching. Three quick things to do now. One, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Two, go to the inneranthem.com website and access your free video series, the three minute music life hack, so you can find out how to use music to enhance your life. And thirdly, get access, get your own copy of the Empowerment Songs albums at the innerenthem.com website.